And we yeah, are so I, back. I spent eighty dollars on the damn case, and you would think <laughs> really? you're doing you, it to me again. You would, you would think <laughs> that you, it would be can okay. Can you drop it in a beer? Yeah, I, I, actually, I can. It's complete. I was thinking about yeah, it. It's, it's, a, it's a lifeproof case. I've dropped it in the sink. I've dropped it in the tub. As long as the plug is in the audio jack, it, does it float? Well, too? no, it, it does actually. There's a, there's an extension audio jack. It's got a little O ring on it. Right. So as long as I plug that in, it's cool. Um, yeah. Sounds like a good toy to have. Eighty eighty dollars, and because uh, I'm wildly clumsy, it makes sense for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just uh, and I'm sure me. having a child soon will this this will pay for itself yeah. very soon. Like, hey, hey, it's a toilet. We could do a whole it looks show like on, poop. Yeah. on what my children put my phones through. <laughs> yeah, my, mine's been riding too much on the work van lately, dealing with realtors and wedding and honeymoon and all that kind of stuff, and finally got a scratch in it after like a year and a half, and it's peeling apart here now. So all right, so before we go completely down the primrose path, I'd like to welcome everyone once again. We are back. This is Smart to Noise Ratio, Pro Audio Podcast. This is Momentous. Silver Anniversary Edition, 50th episode, y'all, if you're counting. Not that we are, really. Just sequential file names and whatnot. But coming to you, uh, we had to make a change of venue so we could smoke some cigars for the occasion. We're in the smoking lounge at the Palatial Cuzzabucky Estates, otherwise known as the Attic of Ants Garage, <laughs> otherwise known as SNR North American Headquarters. Uh, I, as always, am your humble host, John Dayton. Joining me immediately to my right, Anthony Cuzzabucky. Hey, guys. And to his right, Gordon Wood, joining us after a long absence. How's it going? Gordon's been busy getting engaged and buying homes and planning weddings. So life happened to Gordon, and it's probably going to keep happening a good deal more. So <laughs> yeah. we're happy to have you at least once this summer. Yeah. So uh, it's summer, isn't it like 40 degrees outside? Yeah, I just yeah. realized it was June, yeah, actually. Yeah. Okay. Buffalo. It's yeah. summer. Yeah. I haven't yeah. yet put my long johns away. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still wearing them? <laughs> I was just wearing a winter coat last week. <laughs> Yeah, it's not snowing. That's summer. Do a gig no, outside, well, yeah, get like, sunburned. It's 84. Next day, put your long johns back ago. on. Only a couple weeks ago, I saw snow twice in the course of a week. So, mm. All right. So we, uh, as per usual, haven't really done any show prep except for the usual BSing that we do, sitting around the uh, sitting around the coffee table before we get things started. Yep. Had uh, a couple of things we were going to bring up. We were talking about uh, my – I was daydreaming basically about the – Digital console that's on the table again, but then I'm probably not going to get this year at work. The Digico SD. He's looking at a Pro Nine. <laughs> oh, daydreaming! I thought. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, oh, that's what yeah I was daydreaming that I was in NASA and had <laughs> had the kind of resources to go with, sir. Spit on that. Those. <laughs> but, uh, see him on Wednesday. Are you gonna? I'm gonna track some base for uh, for you fellows. Mm. Oh, nice. We needed that. <laughs> <clears throat> yep. Mm. Right. And get my tan on. Well, anyway, Anth brought up the fact that you can run Waves plugins on this console and how mm -hmm. nice it would be to be able to run an 1176 on all your drum tracks and just knock 20 off all of them just because. I don't know if it's it's all of them. I know there's there's a bunch of stuff you can run. There's a... Uh, there's a card. There's there's a shell. No, it's, I, don't think, I don't even think it's a shell. I think it's just a like a, a download. Like it's a, it's a Wave shell des designed specifically for the, the Digico stuff. I'm pretty sure you need a card. Yeah. Okay, I, don't, I haven't looked into it that much because I don't have that much daydreaming capability. Um, <laughs> no, neither do I. I'm not going to get dick for my Midas on the open market. So <laughs> at least you've got it a Midas. May as, well be, may as well be off the table if I until next a, year. If I get a dick for my Yamaha, I'd be in good shape. That's uh, <laughs> about what it's worth. Big bag of dicks that that thing is. A little, little bag of dicks. <laughs> that Japanese console. <laughs> Japanese dicks for a Japanese mm. console? Huh? Uh, it's a family show, y'all. Yeah. Um, Not really. Whatever. I'm glad, I'm glad nobody from my work listens to this. <laughs> That's why I didn't get a job at your place. Because people from your place listen to this <laughs> how come i still have a job <laughs> your uh, grandfather yeah, yeah, might yeah, be yeah. yeah that's why we don't have to put so fire i was on the fence and i'm just out <laughs> <laughs> uh what else we uh i heard from our friend uh Ica. he dropped me a line just yesterday morning actually he was out at a gig with a friend and his friend had this hot new mix that he had to play for him threw it on the system <laughs> pre-show and it was our friends reign of kindo so <laughs> i wonder if if Ica could could let us know um what mix it was i want to know if it was uh it was one of the ones that I actually got to be a part of, or not. Like if it was an older mix, or if it was, if it was a new single, then I was I was there. I got to I got to work with that, so that'd be pretty cool. But pretty sweet, yeah. So yeah, if if that Joey makes... will ever stop touring the world and being on Leno and stuff, <laughs> supporting <laughs> other musicians, we'll, we're eventually going to try and get him on here because he's just a killer when, musician, you know, arranger, producer, town, engineer. Because they're uh they're they're CDs releasing like they they released a single this. Uh, so last Tuesday next month, they're releasing another one, and I'm sure they will do a CD release show in Buffalo. Nice. Um, if I can get a hold of them, 
and kind of wrangle him after a gig. Because they'll be in town for a week or so, usually. They they hang out because they're all from Buffalo. Um, I'm going to come on. Like, I don't think he'd mind hanging out. Like, we just we just need to buy him some booze is what we need to do. That's all it takes. Some booze and some Perrier, and he's set. And uh, we can, you know, dig into his brain a little bit. Um, uh, Josh from GCR said he'd be interested in doing one. Oh, that'd be nice. Which would be cool nice. for some post stuff and everything. Totally. Um, yeah, he runs a uh, he runs a post studio, probably probably the nicest post studio in Buffalo, actually. Um, California Rose Studios over in Orchard Park, right, right, pretty close to where I live. Um, state of the art, you know, all all Pro Tools with a uh, digital design icon, D Command, eighty thousand dollar mouse or whatever. Nice. Um, and uh, <clears throat> you know, he it it was built as a post house. It was actually designed by Larry Swist. Um, if you know who that is, you know it's it's pretty cool that in Buffalo we had a we had a studio designed and actually built, not just designed but built. Like he was here in Buffalo building the damn thing. Um, Larry Swiss is one of the still alive greatest recording environment designers that's that's been out there. He is uh, him and Mick Kazowski actually just released their own line of studio monitors. Oh yeah, I saw that a few years ago, and they're they're. <clears throat> unbearingly glorious they're friggin' expensive as hell but they're i mean you've got two of the best sets of years and know-hows and engineering capabilities in the business they're like yeah no, we should probably build some speakers that we like and they did yeah and they're friggin' <laughs> awesome so <Yeah>. I, <laughs> it's, it's okay everybody everybody daydreamed off a little bit on that a little bit yeah. that's cool all right well i don't know i was Originally going to bring the topic around. Maybe we can do this between us. I'm not sure if I have enough brain power yet because it's been kind of a brutal month. Actually, why don't we talk about that first? We can we can get that out of the way, kind of talk about what we've been working on. Uh, did you and Brandon finally get together and do some drum edits for our church project? Brandon is somewhere out of state, and I'm not sure. Exactly. You know what? I think he's in Georgia. Mm. Um, he's on a pseudo-month-long vacation. He's... Uh, he left the end of May or beginning of June to go to California. He went to San Francisco. He used to live there. Um, it was pretty much a, a wine and food tour of San Francisco for like a week. And they went down to Georgia, I think, to see some friends or family or something like that. And then they're coming back to run a marathon from Toronto, Ontario to Buffalo, New York. And they're going back out again after that. So Yuck. Yeah. <laughs> A I actually, you know, a mar- <laughs> yeah, that that's a friggin' marathon, man. That's two and a half hours of driving. So, dang, I, I think want to drive twenty six <laughs> some, some point something miles. <laughs> Saw somebody had a kilometers of, yeah, on their on their truck had a zero point zero sticker. I think that's <laughs> I'm gonna get one of those in. <laughs> nice. Although, what's well, what's half a mile, uh, marathon? Thirteen point one. Thirteen point one. That's about how many miles I walked uh, last weekend. Went up doing a little gig out of town. I was filling in for Brandon's company. They needed a lighting guy, and shame on me for not asking. Did we, did we talk about this in the last podcast? I don't no? know if we talked about it. It was bef- it was like the day before you went out, so I didn't uh, want to talk about it much and give you <laughs> as much of a, a ha ha moment yeah. as you could get. So I yeah, guess. like Brandon <laughs> set it up to me. He's like, "Oh yeah, doors at seven. You'll be you know done by nine. Get right out of there." Shame on me for not asking anything else about the rest of the day because w- call oh, time boy. was. 6.45 a.m., <laughs> which isn't that big a deal if it wasn't two hours away from my house. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. we got to the venue, yada, 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 did the thing, which was kind of cool. It was, it was a decent... It was a headliner, right? Like, decent, yeah. like, national tour. Yeah, I won't, I won't mention his name, just in case we... I can't to remember his name. Later. Yeah, yeah. Old, old crooner. Um, so we set up, I don't know, like a 20 by 40 stage and a roof and all that yep. stuff. Eight union stage hands on, on that side of things and five guys on our side of things. What was the venue? Uh, Tioga Raceway. Oh, yeah. Um, she's down in southern New York. On uh, on the track. Right on the track. <laughs> so yeah. we had to wait for morning practice to be done until all the ponies got off, and then <laughs> then we could take the track. So we were late getting started. It was, it was a pretty stressful day, but not, not totally nuts. But the out was what was killing me. I thought it would go down a lot faster than it did. So, but, yeah, the show ended promptly at 9. At one thirty, we were pulling away, mm-hmm. drove an hour back to the shop, unloaded three Penske trucks, and then I got to get on the road and get back home. So I got up for that day at 4.30. I went to bed at 5.30 the following morning. Mm-hmm. That sounds about right for a yeah. PDC gig. Yeah. yeah, which I, if I didn't have a day job and a bunch of other stuff I was doing – 
Not no, that bad. No big. Right. Like those guys right. do it. And yeah, did that's, it, done it, do it's, it for it's a long. decent chunk of money for that much time. Eh, you know? It's about four bucks an hour by the time we get. Oh <laughs> uh, well. <laughs> no, it wasn't quite. That we count bad. work hours, not your not your BS driving and unpacking <laughs> the truck Just hours. Drive. Like, <laughs> okay, yeah, <it's laughs> six of those hours were were drive time. So yeah, actually for an right. eighteen hour workday, what I got was was decent compensation. Yeah, I mean, it, if if I didn't have, I was uh, Brandon called me actually to to work the show first, but I. Baby showers. We had two baby showers that weekend, so there's no way. Like, I would be more of a miserable mess than I than I usually am. And and that's a baby pretty shower. <laughs> and a baby shower. That no, that wouldn't have gone over well. Right. But uh, okay. So anyway, what were we talking about? Yeah, there was that gig, and actually that was cool for me because I had worked on stages that size and even quite a bit bigger, but I'd never worked on the stage and the setup itself. Like usually, you know, I'm working uh, on little stuff where I just bring my own BS rig and set it up no. by myself or with one guy helping me. And maybe there's a lighting guy around too. Or when I do get to work bigger stages, they're already there. I just, I show up with whatever act hires yeah, me that's... and I walk to the desk and I do my thing and have a cigar. I'm done. Go yeah. to the F home. Uh, so you yeah, actually have to like, build the stage or? Yeah. After oh, 20 years oh, in the yeah. industry, I finally spent a day where like we set up the towers, cranked the roof up, built the deck Hung the PA, flew the lights, <laughs> did all that stuff, yeah. and uh, so that was pretty interesting to, to get into that. It's it was... nice to not do that anymore. I had to do that for a while. For... Yeah. yeah, I did not... that for what five, six years. Yeah, I actually for Seb, but Seb stuff. Miss Chachi might be getting a job with Seb here shortly. Oh, yeah. is that what the uh, Facebook reference oh, the there was to? Yeah, yeah. He's he's torn between whether he wants to work for Carl's company or Seb. Carl, yeah, I would think. Yeah, <laughs> I would go. <laughs> I, I, as a married individual with a child on the way, would gladly go to Although, Carl's place. In a way, it would, it would be good for Chachi to do a month oh, of, the audio, of uh, brutally video punishing video. gigs. I mean, a month. Might like, clear up some of the problems he's having with his vagina that make him complain. <laughs> <all the time. laughs> like, Is it leaking Like what, uh, what Joe Tall said to Alan the other day, ah, just grab your uterus and make a decision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, all right, anyway, enough about work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, there... There is a uh, the the place where Amanda works. She works at a bridal shop, so that she sells. Uh, my my wife sells bridal gowns. And, yeah, who actually my future wife is right. buying from. Yeah, um, she bought it from somebody else, but I, Amanda didn't know who she was when yeah. she came in the first time. Whatever. But there's a VFW post next door, hmm. and uh, they had some summer concert thing going on. And she came over. She's like, some old bastard showed up with four four two eighteen cabinets. And a stack of speakers on top. Is like, did he look like a crackhead at all? <laughs> a little bit. She's like, no, no, he had some weight to him. I was like, oh, so it wasn't Joe. All right, cool. Yeah. It was out. It, it was out. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, it was obnoxiously loud and it was mixed very poorly. She's like, I could tell from my car. And I walked around in front and it still sounded like ass. I'm like, yeah, I don't think it was Joe. Uh, you see the, you see the desk? Like, I didn't see the desk. I was coming home from work. <laughs> oh, okay. This is a VFW? Yeah. I don't think I was on a VFW show either. <laughs> Must be uh, somebody else around. As soon as I was like, well, overkill on the low end. Might be Joe. Might, maybe. It wasn't Carl. Might be Joe. Mm. All right. But since not anybody else, since nobody, that, nobody else, yeah, those jokes yeah. Are, are foreign to all Joe's of Joe's going to show up my driveway at 4 a.m. tomorrow. But we never disclosed <laughs> the actual location of the Bat Cave, so you're, you're pretty well safe. <laughs> You guys are on the phone book, right? <laughs> phone book? What's that? Phone book. <laughs> phone? Wait, what? Son. It's, two, it's 2013. Right. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I was looking for one the other day. I couldn't find a one phone in my book. house. Yeah. They sent four of them to, to our house. I, I, I threw them all out. Right? Like, yeah. Thanks for the printing fire out a piece pit. of the internet well, and uh, sending it to me, but I actually well, see, needed to look up a residential number. I was out of luck. That's actually like how you start fires around here. You know, you rip apart the phone book. And... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If everybody right. wasn't soaking wet around here, that's what we would have done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So anyway, uh want to apologize quickly to anybody uh, who is a reader of the blog that uh, all of that happened. And I wanted to, I was sort of forced to take my vacation time. It got to be the end of the year. And they're like, yeah, you still have all your vacation time left. You have to take that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but I don't want to. Like, no, you have to take it. So I relented. I, I had, I don't know, almost two weeks left. I took four days. Still going for, you know, rehearsals and services. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to put in a day in the office. Like, why don't you just take time off? Like, because there's not anybody else in the organization that can do my job. So if you want to have church, I kind of need to be here a little bit. <laughs> when, when, when I got a text on Wednesday from John, 
He's like, nope, not not coming over tonight. And Amanda's like, is he? Do we say something? Is he mad at us? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Nope. I was forced to take my vacation time. Yeah. So to make use of myself, I went to work at a carpentry shop building cabinets with my buddy, which was actually really therapeutic. He's a <laughs> buddy of mine just opened up a cabinetry shop. Got a huge contract to build fireplace surrounds for condominiums. Oh, nice! Big, big nice. money in that. But he's setting up shop in a barn. He rented a barn. There's nothing in it. Yeah. So. Me and another guy built all his workbenches and carts and plywood racks and packing tables and everything else. I did a surprising amount of two-by-four framing for working in a a fine woodworking (laughs) job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I may be in the the market for kitchen cabinets. If if you've got 40 grand on hand... uh, Uh, No, no, that I don't. (laughs) He's your guy. If not, call my dad. Uh, Okay. Uh, (laughs) <laughs> so that's that's why there hasn't been anything on the blog lately. That and my kids got sick, and then I got sick, and yeah, so all of that happened. Uh, which, so, one, yeah. which one did you get, the hacking nastiness? Uh, no, the barfing. Oh, yeah. The fever and the shakes and all that. Because, huh. you know, it's it's the flu season still. Uh, in right, New York. Yeah. It's Buffalo, man. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I agree. We did have snow on Mother's Day again. <laughs> Third time in, in my short memory. But uh, anyway, we were going to eventually steer this thing around to talk about phase and polarity because I it just keeps coming up. Um, no one I keep, ever seems to sort that stuff no out. Nobody sorts no. it out, and it is. It's tough to do the definitive word on it because it's such a vast thing. So we may get started on this and kind of bail out of it until you just look it up on your own. But the, <laughs> the thing that I have beef with is not – I think everybody kind of gets that the polarity button on your console or in your DAW – Inverts the polarity, and it's called phase because the symbol for phase is a nice short abbreviation. Mm, and, it, Morphine, yeah. and technically, inverting the fa- inverting the polarity, and you know, pushing the phase to 180 degrees does the same thing. But it doesn't. If you're dealing with a sine wave that yes. doesn't change, like if only if you're dealing with a periodic waveform, like not to say that it couldn't apply to a square wave or a sawtooth or something, but the wave something consistent, rather. something the wave yeah. has to be at at one frequency consistently, not changing because phase is really a time thing. Like you're pushing something slightly out of time. Right. Um, in Dependent EQs, a... it's basically doing the same. You're running it through a filter, which causes group delay, or you know, what are, it, it basically it, it creates a phase issue, and you use that. To your advantage, you either use it to create additive or to take away something. Yeah, or, or destructive interference. So, yeah, I just I hear guys constantly talking about setting up drum mics and just flip the face sitting, on that. Yeah, just flip the face. That's all you got to do. Like, eh, no, because yeah. <laughs> it, you know, if if you do that, I mean, it's why don't you move the sucker three inches? Right, yeah. It, yeah. you're you're going after something that you need to be touching with a jeweler screwdriver, and you're hitting it with a two pound lump hammer. I don't know if I'm articulating this very well. I mean, I jump jump in. Yeah, it's, it's that, <laughs> I have a hammer with that very, that hammer right there. That very, the very one. Um, oh, there's a table saw up here. <laughs> so I guess the difference is it's for drum edits. <laughs> if you flip polarity on something, you are essentially creating a condition of things being 180 degrees out of phase, but only at certain frequencies. At other frequencies. Things are 90 degrees out of phase or right. 270 or some amount in between. Like, because it, as you move away from the points where things are dependent on the frequency in, increase or decrease, right? It, it so changes like, the right. The, so, if you flip polarity and that causes you know a standing wave at 180 to become out of phase and cancel out with your original source, which by the way, there's no, there's no phase until you have two sources of the same thing interacting with each other. It's the time difference. So like that's the difference between a DI and a mic signal off of the same amp, or it's the difference between the snare bottom mic and the overheads or the kick and the overheads of the Tom mics and the overheads. It's, yeah. it's those differences in space. The sound waves take a little bit about one point or no, about 0.9 milliseconds per foot. It's almost a millisecond a foot. Roughly yeah. a millisecond. But the thing is you're dealing with, micro delay generally like if you're talking about the difference between a di and a mic on a guitar cabinet you're talking about less than yeah. less than one millisecond it's right it's, or, you know you might even be talking in samples yeah. if, if that's an easy way to adjust but regardless if you're unless you're nine inch nails right if you're <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna pause to keep my cigar light here the uh <laughs> if you're throwing something out of phase it's say you know you have a standing wave at 180 if hitting the polarity button causes that to be out of phase and then cancel with the 180 in the original signal 
that's great if that fixes your problem or it adds together and makes the signal really, really fast. Rich, but yeah. let's, let's say it's canceling. Okay, if 180 cancels, that's not the end of the story because then so is 360. You, yeah, you have 360 and, degrees multiplied yeah. out that can cause your problem or well, fix no, no, your problem. Well, no, no, 360 hertz and then 720 hertz. And, yeah, and so like sorry, every absolutely. octave below above that is going to be also out of phase. And then... Halfway in between those points that are exactly out of phase, phase are points that are exactly in phase. So as you move up, you're going to see peak dip, peak dip, boost cut, boost cut of all these series too. series of frequencies. Now, you can use that to your advantage. Like, people seem to think phasing is a bad thing, but when you throw two mics on a same guitar cabinet, that's exactly what you're using, and you can get marvelous results. Like, the, mm -hmm. the interaction between those two mics and the comb filtering that you yeah. get. That's sometimes what you want or what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's safer to use a single mic. Like I always try to get away with a single mic if I can. But what if that fails? Right. That's it, like yeah. that's that's where you know that it, it comes in where you know even if you don't use both mics the entire time, like have them. If right. you if you got the ability to have both in one craps, then oh, if you're talking there about you go. guitar mics, yeah, in a yeah. live situation, that'll yeah. that'll save your butt for a number of reasons. And we this is our favorite guitar trick. We talk about it all the time. If you throw a fifty seven so, and a six oh nine or a four twenty one or even two fifty sevens or two four twenty ones, right? Yeah. Two of whatever, like a D one twelve and a and a knockoff, <laughs> a, and a cab dynamic mic. or what digital reference. Yeah, yeah, One yeah. Throw a CAD guys. mic and the yeah. reference mic from your RTA on there. Just do something. But the <laughs> I, my I there shot, for the mouse click. I shot an entire video with an RTA mic once, and it sounded great. They're they're, they're pretty flat. <laughs> I, I they're did. not exactly flat though. Oh, yeah. Well, you're right, but like we were, we were shooting a video for a, a radio commercial that was going to you know post for video. So everything oh, so was stopping the 10k anyway. Yeah, right. So what? It wasn't it wasn't a big deal, but I was like, you know what? I've got you know whatever sure 55s up there for props and. I've got, you know, a 44 hanging overhead just, just to catch everything. I was like, you know what? Let's let's put a, an RTA mic up there just for the kick of it. That's what we used. Yep. That's what's in, mm -hmm. that's what's in, know, that's what's in post. Incredibly good for, too, is that trick where you mic the wall. Well, I was going to yeah. say for using it as an RTA mic, but... <laughs> they're, they're okay for that. I mean, no, honestly, I can, I can really pull gear into my RCA and get these in results. They're not that picky. Yeah. <laughs> if the mic in your cell phone gives you is almost as accurate a reading as your two hundred dollar <laughs> RTA mic, it, it makes oh, you no, it was a hundred. It's, it's better. Oh, it was, it was that RTA it was, it mic. It was the DBX oh. mic. It came with the DBI. The DBX oh, which press. actually has, See, has the, the which identical is Behringer or, one, which yeah. is fifty dollars. So. Right. And they, they both have the same Panasonic capsule in it, and so yeah. does so does the Audix one. I think I didn't buy it. Yeah. I just plug it in. Yep. Which is to say they're all equally <laughs> good. Yeah. It depends on how much money you have to throw but, away. Yeah. 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 Think about, think about, dollars plus. It, think about an RTA mic is they're Omni. So if you if you throw them right up against the wall, you get a half Omni. Yeah. More and of you, a, a PCC. You, yeah. You exploit yeah. the boundary effect. And the boundary is a good size wall. You actually get pretty good frequency response. <laughs> nice coverage. Yep. Really. Yep. So anyway, where did we, we veered off? Oh, the, the guitar thing. You do yep. that, so you have two mics. That way, if one of them gets kicked over, the other one still works. If one of them sounds awful, maybe the other one will sound all right, especially if you're on a stage where you're the guy in the room and you don't have time to run around and do mic placement. Um, and if you luck out, they both sound great. You pick the one that sounds better and use that or yeah. blend the two together. Yeah. Like, I've had nights where neither mic sounded good, but together yeah. they sounded awesome. Yeah. Or announcements yeah. on a solo or something, you need a little brighter, a little darker. Right, right. You can Still do that. Still option. Right. Yeah. And those and those all of that is taking advantage of the difference in phase. Now there it's it's fixed. You know, the mics are a certain distance apart, they're a certain distance from the source. You're not gonna go and kick one back a right. centimeter so or two. Your phase relationship is fixed, and if you want to change it, you can move them, but then you can also change how much the comb filtering is taking place by which one is louder, if they're equal. Uh, you could invert polarity on one of them, I suppose. I almost never do that, though, because... I've never seen any use I'm, for that. Like, I'm pretty other, good at placing than, mics. Than kick mics, I haven't... Well, it's your top bottom, I guess. One time in my career did I hit the polarity button on a guitar mic, because it was just not in a good spot at all. And I was too lazy to walk down to the stage. <laughs> <laughs> just kick it on the ground. Be like, that's what rock and roll sounds like. Yeah, Which I've, is... done, I've done that for the uh, old uh, belly button lint uh, people, I think. Oh, yeah. Gordon's demonstrating twice. now by holding yeah, his own like, mic down, like down here, down here, his belt up buckle. here. Yeah. yeah, everyone knows about that. All right. So w when you're doing this kind of stuff, I mean, uh, try it out. Next time you're recording drums, like go into Pro Tools, do a single snare hit, record that. Look at all the individual tracks. Like, look where that peak is lining up. You know, make mm -hmm. the grid show up and see 
where it is. So like the difference in where that peak is, that's what's going to cause phase differences. And, and you can nudge it and, and then, it and then like process it. Like I, I think short of like hitting the polarity button on the channel in pro tools or reaper or whatever you're using, like you can actually process tracks to be inverted. So like right click mm -hmm. on that puppy tell it to invert it like the the program will actually literally flip it over so you can see the waveform upside down that's not the same as shifting it 180 degrees because if you're if you're going to talk about like you really need to talk about what frequency are you shifting 180 degrees right there's one well, pro tools there's an invert which i believe just takes it and flips it upside down right so that's it's independent yep. of of frequency i guess All right and then if you're going to put a phase plug in which is actually right. doing the exact same thing that um, each individual band of an EQ is doing is it's it's using a filter. It's not creating de delay directly. Now, like when we talk about aligning tracks to eliminate phasing, we're talking about either you know recording something and then sliding the tracks around to line those peaks up, or sliding them either by adding delay as we record them or as we play them back to make them all sort of line up in time. Mm -hmm. uh, what EQs do is the filter causes group delay, which means some frequencies are delayed and some aren't. And you use that to your advantage when the, when the signals are split, they go through all these different filters, depending on how much you slide each filter in or out, you cause these group delays to happen. And then when you recombine the signal, those phase differences cause the EQ curve that is what you're actually desiring out of the box. Right. So, all right. I see a lot of glassy stairs in the room. I may have <laughs> one. I may be wearing one my own self. So. <laughs> what else can we talk about, gentlemen? Um, I was thinking about possibly going back into, because this is always, always, always coming up, but, like, the, the whole getting into the business thing. It's been on Reddit a lot. It's a everywhere lot, yeah. a lot. It's like every third post in any forum you go into is either what <laughs> what interface slash mic should I buy, or should I go to college for this, or what you know what do I do? Go and work at a studio. Just do it. Yeah, just I know. Go, I'm copying Nike. Like, you, you say don't work at a studio? No, just oh, go. Just go, go work at a studio. Like there, or push a box for the local sound guy. Yeah, yeah, like there there are very few things. Like I think all of. All the big studios in Buffalo I've worked for at one point in time or another, which is not saying a lot. Like, we've got one real nice live studio. We've got one real nice post studio. And then we've got some other stuff. But, you're like, it doesn't matter what gear's there. The, the fact is you're going to go in and learn something from somebody else that knows more about or a different way to do exactly what you want to do. Um, and you need to sit down with a pad, take down some notes, think about stuff, ask them why they do things. Like if you're interning, chances are they're not paying your goofy ass. So just ask some questions, get paid in answers. Yeah. That's wow. Somebody write that down. <laughs> <laughs> like ask some questions, get paid in answers. Rem remember that. Use your own blood if need be. Mm. Yeah. I mean like that's killer. I, I worked at, um, uh, not, not worked at, but worked out of and did some stuff at, place where the Goo Goo Dolls recorded a couple of their first records because their their producer was tight with the uh, the owner and engineer and stuff. Done some stuff there. He's tried to get me to start working there full time and I just I can't do it. Like you wanted me to, to come in and take part and essentially bring in business at first and then listen to some of my stuff and you know was uh, wanted to have me in and, and working on stuff all the time. And I was like, well, you know, unless you've got business coming in all the time, I've got a full-time job that pays my health benefits. So no, uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, man. Yeah. Um, I'll come in and do nights for you. Like if you got stuff coming in all the time, you, if you're open 24 seven, I'll come in and I'll work on your stuff and I'll, I'll, <clears> I'll, I'll engineer and I'll produce and I'll mix for you. But I, I don't have time to be sitting around your place, you know, Son of a bitch. <laughs> just leave gonna, it. It's going to stay on the just, ground from now on. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll bring a Save coffee table next time. <laughs> There's a coffee table. I <laughs> can't seem to get to it. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I've helped out at, at the Goo Dolls new studio down to, and, I, and I'm, I'm still trying to get a call back from the the studio manager, trying to uh, trying to get in and just learn the ins and outs of the place. Like, yeah, I can sit down and run an SSL. That's not a big deal. I can run all the outboard. That's not a problem. I can figure out the routing, hopefully, as long as it's labeled. If it's just a bunch of TT stuff, I'm, I'm a little screwed. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll figure it out eventually. Like, once the 1176 lights up, I'm good. I don't, I don't care about right. the rest of it. Um, you know, and then the uh, the post house, California Road, 
Um, I, I've had a chance to work there, and I feel comfortable on their system enough to to work in and out of there. But at the same time, I've got you know three different styles of engineers. One guy from the late seventies, early eighties. One guy that works almost solely in post production for video and and movie and and uh, you know audio books and speech and stuff like that. And then another guy that works a hundred percent, almost a hundred percent in live band tracking. You know, traditional studio track drums, bass, then guitars and all that stuff. So you've got three different people of 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 different varying brain power and input and, and approach. Um, and I even have to pay a dime for it, which is pro- was probably the equivalent of what I've gotten out of all of them put together is probably the equivalent of a college degree worth of material. Yeah, some heavy stuff. Um, yeah. So that I mean. Most places be like, all right, well, we're not paying you, but you can go get coffee, you can hang out, and shut up. <laughs> Don't say anything. If you have a question, ask somebody else. Don't talk to me about it. <laughs> there's, there was there was an old Pensado's place I was watching with with Bruce Swedeen. Um and he's talking about who is it? Uh, the one of the older older engineers and stuff, and they they hired him as producer. He's like, all right, great, come along. Shut up! Don't say anything! Don't ask me questions! And that was it. It was. It wasn't like make sure you're watching what I'm doing. It was like no, shut up! Make sure you get me coffee. I don't want to hear anything else out of you. <laughs> and that's how Bruce Swedeen got started. Yeah. So, well, I think the thing that I want to bring up because there's a million. You know, you can get into any form you want, read any blog you want. They're all basically saying the same things, and we've said it too on our blog. But I wanted to try and get a little bit deeper and sort of help people figure out because there's so many. There's so much depth to production. I mean, you can, you know, if you want to be the next EDM star, buy a laptop, get a copy of Fruity Loops or whatever, or Reason, sit down in your bedroom and get after it. Like, you don't need anything else. And, in fact, it's probably better if you don't because if you're just trying to do what everybody else is doing, you're going to make the same boring crap that everybody else makes. And if you get in there on your own, you might wreck it horribly or you might, you know, make the next – you're leaving, aren't you? I just just watched him walk all the way around the room. Okay, apparently <laughs> right. Anthony's but, taking a potty break. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, but anyway, I just I, I, what I wanted to try and figure out was how to help people fi- first figure out where they want to go, and then next figure out how to do it. Um, maybe if I divert a little bit, tell a story about how my dad wound up building houses. Uh, my dad was in college, was going to be a teacher, and just wasn't happy with it. So we wound up talking to a counselor about things, and the guy said, "Well, you know what." Uh, not talking about your educational experience, just <clears throat> in the last year, what are the three favorite things that you've done? So, you know, he was just talking about it. It's like, well, you know, we, we built some new walls in the frat house and, and that was pretty cool. And, you know, we built a float for the homecoming parade and that was pretty cool. And then the, the third thing that he thought of was building something else. So the guy just turned to him and says, huh, do you think maybe you should get out of education and go into building? <laughs> <laughs> so he did. And he was happy as a clam still is. Um, and he fortunately told that to me, you know, before I got too involved with figuring out where I was going to go in my life. And every time that I asked myself that question in high school, it was like, well, you know, what are, what are the, the three favorite things that I did in the last few months? All right. Well, you know, tech in the musical, building the set for the musical, building, like, you know, building floats for parades apparently comes up fairly, fairly often, <laughs> um, you know, helping a you know, a local theater production with lights, recording stuff in my basement into a boom box. Uh, so it was always tech and, you know, concerts. I was captivated by a lot of things. I read a lot of fiction, listened to a lot of music, but you know, to me, the pinnacle experience was going to a concert and the band was really kind of secondary. Like I would just about yeah. miss, you know, the opening performances. Cause I'm trying to, you know, yeah, like, how does it so sound? I'm, Not yeah. what does it sound like? Just how does it sound? Mm, right. Yeah. You know, I'd be edging around like everybody else is trying to edge closer to the stage and I'm trying to edge back behind the front of house tent, see what's going on in there or edge like way over to the side so I can see inside stage into the monitor. You know, monitor the best is always by front of house. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I guess just kind of if you think you want to go into it, I mean, is it appealing? I mean, I I was a little bit unfocused. I just knew I wanted to go into production, and there was a lighting program available, and that sounded pretty good. I already had some electrical experience, so you know I kind of understood that and went in that direction. It turned out to be wrong; it made a wrong move, but uh, at least it was a starting point. Like I at least knew I wanted to go into production. So if you think you want to go into production, I. It, but you really enjoy, like, I don't know, number games and stuff. Like, if if, you, if all the things you like seem to point towards being an accountant, just go be an accountant. Like, make lots of money. Drive a nice car. <laughs> marry a high-maintenance blonde. <laughs> well, Anth got, Anth got 
one out of three. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's not a blonde. <laughs> <laughs> oh, watch out now. <laughs> uh, no, no, that's gas pipe. Oh, oh, oh. Maybe, maybe my heat will work in the winter. Who knows? <laughs> maybe that's for the horseshoe pit. Oh, I wanted yeah, to go yeah. into accounting. I got I got accepted. To, yeah. Yeah. It could have been Ivy League. I turned into an engineer with a fancy hobby. Right. So yeah. I guess that would be the next place I would go with this, is if, if you really find that your inclinations are leading you to be a teacher, an accountant, professional firefighter, going to law enforcement, music is always there as an option. Like, if mm-hmm. uh, really... <laughs> It's a kick in the balls prime, working in this industry. Prime, yeah. prime, prime example of your firefighter thing. Um, yeah. Ica is probably the only one that'll actually appreciate this. But the the keyboard player from Raina Kindo is a full time firefighter. Firefighter. Well, whiskey. Yeah. Um, so I'm slurring my my words. But yeah, he you know he's he's a disgusting piano player. Um, he, he's gross out of his out of his mind piano player. Um, but he really wanted to be a firefighter. So he went through all the schooling. Like he could have got picked up, taken on tours, played piano, played keys, played roads, played organ, whatever. Really wanted to be a firefighter. So that's what he does. In his spare time, he goes on tour to Brazil. Yeah. Appears on the Leno show and whatnot. Yeah. Shows, oh, no, he yeah. didn't. It was just, just, that was, that was yeah. just Joe and Steve. But still, yeah, had the ability to. Just like for hey, sure. another good plug for this industry, my chiropractor. He's a chiropractor. Loves being a chiropractor. Buddy plays bass, drums, everything else in his spare time. Maybe I should have a chiropractor. Least, so you know, once <laughs> a month, and there you go. <laughs> much better to be a, a wealthy practitioner of some other art and have lots of extra money to play with your hobby on the weekend than to have your hobby be your whole job and be like trying to nickel and dime it so you can buy enough gear or repair your gear enough to stay in business. Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> both, of, both of them. Yeah, those guys. Uh, um, but seriously, like if... If you think about the things that you really enjoy and production or music just seems interesting, keep it as a hobby. I mean, nothing yeah, more will... more fun that way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like like knowing that you're going to go to work and get a paycheck for something else totally that you don't have to worry about. Um, how how does the bass sound on this? If that's what your paycheck's counting on, you're not sure of it. It's kind of nice to fall back onto something else. You're like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I designed this thing for NASA and it works great. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. where you're getting paid from. I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah, that and works. really, the levels of you know terror involved with that. I mean, like <laughs> yeah. working for NASA or doing shows, like you really, the goal is a zero fail situation. Right, right, um, <laughs> right. I would actually probably is rather not an work, for, work for NASA. I think. <laughs> I think I would. Yeah, because there's it. only like your boss looking at you in that instance, whereas there's a crowd of. However many decided to show there up is, that night. I for, tell you, well, for talking, we talk about this industry being a kick in the balls. There's nothing like having an audience of two or 3,000 people glaring at you while something doesn't work. Yeah. Because all of America can't glare at you at once. Like space shuttle <laughs> yeah. goes down and stuff. They're like, yeah. uh, Just pull be, your yeah. shirt over your head and run to the front of the van. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Scream Cornholio a couple times. <laughs> uh, Nobody gets that. You but, guys get that. But. You know, if you, if you hear us, you know, week after week or other guys talking about like that, there really isn't any glamour in the industry. Like it's all yeah, just no. long hours of intense, difficult, complicated work with a lot of thinking. <laughs> right. And it doesn't pay that great. Like only the best of the best of the best are living in big houses, driving nice cars. Yeah. Everybody else, and they which, still work their balls off to get yeah, there. And they, yeah, and they they do that because they, they didn't. Yep, but, they work around the clock. So yeah. I mean, I'm I'm pretty lucky. I get to turn knobs full time. I'm just squeaking by, and I'm at about the 78th percentile for <laughs> audio professionals. <laughs> yeah, I've got a, I've got a, I've got to turn knobs for a living, hit record, and then go and mow the lawn. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm still like we're, we we can still pay our bills. So yeah, our friend Alan Sled, he's a freaking full time. Lineman, and I'm, I'm <laughs> making who knows how much. Yeah, he makes all kinds of money, in and he always time. asks, "We do this why?" It's like it's fun. No matter how bad of a day you've had, once the show's on, it's like, oh, this is where I want to be. Right, and you're not chained to it. Yeah, I mean that's the nice thing. If you're doing it as a hobby, you can say no to things. If you're not yeah. doing it as a hobby, then you have to take every everything gig that comes oh, yeah. along, every yeah. wretched and no matter gig if and you get puked and, on and all that kind of good stuff. Too yep. bad. And, <laughs> 
Whereas yeah. if you're independently wealthy, you're at least independently able to support yourself, and you can just yeah. do some gigs here and there when you feel like it for fun. That's <coughs> that's the independently way say get the hell out of here. Unless yeah. <laughs> unless you could not possibly imagine doing anything else, I couldn't. I mm -hmm. swung a hammer for 20 years of my life. Did it all week and couldn't wait to get out on the gigs. Like that was yeah, all after, I knew. After all a years. 60, 70 hour week, you were still excited to pack your trailer, yeah. go out, unload oh, yeah. your trailer. Yep. Hang yeah. drywall for 40 or 50 hours, jump straight in the truck, drive to a gig. <laughs> yep. Sleep uh, in, do it again, sleep in, back to yeah. hanging drywall. The first three weeks that I knew, or the first three months that I knew John, I thought it was a cocaine addict. He's covered, <laughs> I'm covered in white powder all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah nope. I would definitely love to do gigs wow. seven days a week, but at the same time, it's just like, yeah, I kind of like a paycheck and, you know, being able to take a vacation here and there. Because, <laughs> yeah. yeah, in this industry, unless you're on the big, there is no vacation time. You're just there. Yeah. Well, there isn't for those guys. I mean, though, you got to really force yourself to take the time because the only, pretty much the only thing you turn down is your collar if you're yeah. if you're doing it on the real. Yeah. But yeah, um, and by the way, bring spare shirts because I'm a little bigger and it's well. This year's not too bad. This year might actually be a sweat free year. Yeah, finally. I did a three shirt gig day on one shirt last week. <laughs> <laughs> nice. The, well, the shirt they brought me was like a double XL. I'm like. Have you seen me? Cool, it'll fit me. <laughs> yeah, I'll bring it. me and both of my assistants in this. <laughs> <laughs> Ruben, Chachi, get in here. <laughs> if you meet my right-hand man and my left-hand man, they'll be, they'll be standing in for my pectorals in this shit. Yes, and you have my brain. Yeah. Let me spin around. I'm going to take a nap real quick. And Just I'll form up. the head. Yeah. <laughs> it almost sounds like we've wandered into an episode of Transformers. That was exactly what I was yeah. thinking. <laughs> But uh, anyway, I'm I'm kind of rambling here, but I, I hope you sort of see what I mean. Like if you if you are so hungry for it that you can't imagine, like if if going to work in a dive club to pay your dues and hone your skills sounds like a good idea, then don't hold back. Just dive in. Go do it. Don't go to school. Like there's plenty of stuff available on the internet. There's plenty of people you can find to talk to. Don't talk to, talk to us. <laughs> like, I don't know. Who, like somebody was on the internet the other day asking if they should pursue a master's in audio. Like I guess, what? like if somebody has to be the next professor of audio, I, I, I guess suppose, it's acoustics but, design or something because that is a little tricky, a lot of right. math, all that kind of good stuff. But but let's say let's say you're you're the owner or the proprietor of a venue. I, I put this question to all three of us. You need a new guy to mix monitors for you. Two applicants show up. One of them you know nothing about except he's holding a diploma from Full Sail. The other one, you know nothing about except that your buddy from another club has worked with him a couple of times, says he's all right. Which one do you hire? Not well, the, the guy from Full Sail. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or I, 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 Full yeah. Sail has a bit of a thing. But, like, do you yeah. hire the guy with the sheepskin or do you hire the guy that, that you sort of know? I, yeah. I guess I would test them both out for, you know, two weeks at a time. Because chances are the guy that doesn't have a sheepskin is going to work his nuts off for you. Yeah. The other guys were like, well, I have a degree in this. Like, you know, Did fuck. I ever tell you about the time that I worked on an SSL? For <laughs> you can go and fuck yourself with your degree. You, SSL. Busy. you go and wrap yeah. your dick in that sheepskin because that's, yeah. that's about as far yeah. as you're going to get with it. But, yeah, yeah, you drive them both out, see how they work. And, like, not not to knock, you know, one of my buddies went to full sale, and now he sells cigars at a, a place up on transit, yeah. uh, transit Broadway. <laughs> like, so many times nice. it isn't going to come to – we advertise the job and a guy from full sale and a guy that, you know, my buddy down the block knows you're probably going to go to your buddy down the block and be like, Hey, who do you got can twist knobs and monitor world for me? He's going to go, Oh, I know this guy. You hire him. Yeah. yeah it not, never goes to the there's paper. a recent yeah. graduate from the fullest sale of universities in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> you should open that fullest sale. Fuller sale and fullest sale. More, <laughs> more the full sales. <laughs> more fuller. Full mast motherfucker. <laughs> Abandoned ship. Uh, <laughs> and I'll be the professor from Bear Poles University, <laughs> from coasting into port with never mind. Tweak, Twist, and Turn <laughs> University. No, that was, Bear, that's the name of my law firm. Bear, oh, sorry, Bear, I no, thought that was the name of your chiropractor. <laughs> no, right, right. The law firms do we cheat them and how? Oh, okay. <laughs> Is that Bear Bear Poles or? But never mind. Not pole dancers, but no. no, no. Like, can you imagine what it, what a classified ad for a, for an audio engineer would look like for a monitor engineer? Must like, know all of this shit. Well, no, it's, it's ninety characters or less or whatever. Yeah. Too, like, so what all the abbreviations would be? Like, yeah. Must be able to turn K down and roof <laughs> delay phase. <laughs> Three phase. Like, turns one, out, it turns out you're applying one, for a job in somebody's basement. Mon, yeah. mon eng for club club gig. Must have ex exp with. Like, yeah, I don't know why. I think we need five a text version of this. <laughs> five Y X. I'm mixing monitors. Uh, no, we move three front P house after that. Three P H need not apply. Right. G R F. 
EQ. Yeah. Yeah. And and Rung <laughs> w- w- Wudges. FDBK. <laughs> like, take all need the bottles out. <laughs> anyway, but that's the thing. It's like it doesn't. You don't see classified ads for you know monitor engineer, engineer needed for club gig because guys that are trying to fill those jobs go out and find just, them. Yeah, you just you ask who you know. Yeah. Go to the bands. Like, hey, who do you know could do this job for me? So anyway, it's a great argument for if you really feel drawn to it, go try it out. Like, if you you know if you're a high school senior graduating college, don't run right off someplace. See if there's some place you can get a gig because if it doesn't work out. Then whatever you go get a job flipping burgers, you save up a little more money. You start college one year later, hopefully slightly wiser, and and maybe you don't screw up as bad as the rest of the incoming freshmen. You or, serve with your parents or family or some something like that. Save yourself some cash, right? Or yeah. it takes off for you. You wind up being good at it. You spend your off days on the internet studying, reading books, yeah. practicing on your own. And four years later, your compatriots are all eighty thousand dollars in debt. Or two years later, however long full sale takes, they're eighty grand in debt. You, meanwhile, have been drawing a steady paycheck. They can have your job because you're ready to move up the ladder. Yeah, yeah. you got serious chops. You got, you know, you get a chance to work at a, a place that's got national action, like whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Found all the awesome in that one. Huh? <laughs> I inhaled. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've just got one of our own little. Uh, brother of the knob here uh he's off in what albany area what was it doing a uh, theater tech nate oh nate actually yeah. made the move i had heard from yeah, him yeah he made oh, the really? move and yeah. uh you our, know he was going to school for it but he's been working with us and actually got references i think from myself and john and that's actually what seems to have got was it wasn't john it was actually professor. elliot but <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> john's, john's nice. youngest child wrote a reference for me i had one of the kids do it i'm not gonna lie yeah, but, yeah and chachi's currently on the fence as to whether to go for work for a rock and roll production company or a, an av install company so yeah they're branching out chachi Check. was in school he studied production arts and theater and this and that and he found he was getting more experience like he could have taught the audio class that he took just from having done gigs with me. Yeah, that's kind of how I felt when I took a couple classes in community he was college. Correcting the professor on matters of EQ. <laughs> yeah, Nate's had to do that several times just because the guy trying to teach him audio was a lighting guy. After after three corrections, you're automatically qualified to show up in a bathroom with a pipe. <laughs> like, excuse me, sir. <clears throat> Beg your pardon, my uh, I believe I believe you <laughs> meant Yamaha 16K. Is not the answer for anything. <laughs> Take that AVM card and shove it up your beautiful ass. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then I guess the, uh, to wrap it up, I mean, if you, uh, just pursue some stuff. Like, you know, if you're, if you're into making music, you think you want to be an air quotes producer. And I say that because what that really is, is what we would have years ago called a beat builder. Um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I just recently found the R audio jerk for him. Or yeah, audio, audio circle jerk. No, just audio, audio jerk. jerk. It's, it's all knocking Beats headphones. <laughs> <laughs> you should forward it's, it's, this to me. <laughs> I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> the, the, the first post on there was, finally, after years of brilliant beat making, he's worked into rooted vegetables. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> it's, it's Beats, B-E-E, or B-E-E-T-S by Dre. It's, you know, the, the purple, the yellow, the green. It's got his picture on this side, like three new delicious favors of rooted vegetables for your mouths. <laughs> uh, so anyway, the other, the other idea that I had that I wanted to get out, and you know, I thought this was when I was in the car, is one, just start doing it and keep your wits about you. Like find out what it is about it that you hate. If there's stuff that you hate, weigh it out. Is it worth doing some stuff that I hate in order to do all the rest of the stuff that I enjoy? Or like, for example... If you're the kind of guy that wants to learn a lot more about sound because you're the sort of guy that sits in your room, you write songs, you play your guitar, or your keyboard, or you build beats or whatever, if you're drawn to the tech and you're constantly studying the tech and you're putting aside music making because the tech is interesting to you, which was what happened to me, I would just sit yeah. down to play guitar and I'd spend all day messing with my amp and rewiring my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I gave up playing guitar and got another thing. And I know yeah. guys that, that went the other way that, you know, we're trying to mix and do things and we're just totally captivated by the music side of it and shifted and went that way. Mm-hmm. But just keep your wits about you for what's actually drawing your attention to something. Precious or, tune or molecules. Do, uh, the precious do, tune molecules. Do what you got to do to get the job. I totally, um, I've never mentioned before. I, I totally 100% BS my way into the job that I have now. Fake it till you make it. Yeah. They <laughs> they were looking for somebody to run the recording studio at the church. And I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I can do that. And I can do all this other stuff pretty great. 
and all the other stuff I could do, I had no idea how to run a recording studio. I still really don't, but I was like, yeah, I can turn on a computer and hit go. What else is there? Everybody plays everything right, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no one plays anything right. <laughs> um, but, you, you know, a few years later, I, I finally got myself into the place where I've been asked to go in and, and start working at, at bigger studios around town. And, you know, people want to have me work on their projects and stuff. And it was the drive of I had no idea what I was doing, but I knew I wanted to do it um, and dropped, you know, my my fancy food making career. <laughs> by, by, by the wayside and uh, ding fries are done ding fries yeah would you like an apple pie with that would you like a baseball bat with that like, <laughs> crackhead was that was the kind of food service job Anthony had I, I'm not not afraid to not afraid to mention I got to whack a guy in the back of the head with a five iron once um, <laughs> well, it's 4am people are drunk you, they got grills in you don't know what they're after I don't, I don't know <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so so I hit a guy with a two by four. I hit a guy with a five iron. I hit a guy with a chain. I, you know, it, it's a dirty business. And in all Buffalo. those elements are hanging up in his current studio. Just, <laughs> yeah. Well, the two by four is still necessary for tying in power. So you, know. yeah. you don't want to play on beat. Check this. And, yeah, <laughs> chain your foot to the wall, son. Um, yeah, but no, I did. I, I faked it until I made it. Like not not made it. Like made it, made it. But you know, I'm doing. What, what I really wanted to do for a long time, what I love to do, and what I, I think I'm passable at to keep my job. Um, and I totally BS my way through the project. I told him I could do a bunch of stuff that I couldn't, and I figured out how to do it in the first few months and then just kept working on it and getting better from there. Oh, my bosses aren't listening, so I'll have a talk on Tuesday, I guess. Mm. Uh, but, yeah, I, you know, everything turned out for the best. And, you know, if you don't have anything to lose, uh, it's, not, it's not a bad way to go. Right. So I guess it's cheap enough and easy enough. Like, first of all, if you want to know, like, just get on the Internet and start looking, like pick a blog and start reading, pick a podcast and start listening. You're going to hear a lot of stuff that's over your head. And that's OK, because you're eventually going to run into it for real mm -hmm. and remember back and things are going to click into place. Um, but there's just such a wealth of knowledge out there. And I've sat through some classes and it's it's honestly kind of a waste of time. Like yeah. I, I know a very few people who have gone to full sale, who have, who have gone on to successful careers and I don't know where they're getting their figures for like 98% of our graduates working in the industry. I think if you like get a job as a well, coffee boy in a studio yeah, for 10 yeah, minutes and then quit, yeah. that still counts. You can yes. run the XM. As long as you're on the XM satellite, you've worked in the industry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like if you're in charge of, of dialing up the, the satellite radio in the restaurant where you're yeah, dipping yeah. fries. Like, even Josh gave me a, Josh, uh, our buddy over at California Road, is an instructor. Um, he teaches Pro Tools post production and some other Pro Tools stuff at yeah. at a college. Um, yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, and he gave me. He's like, here you go. Here's some of the uh, the instructors' books and and stuff like that. You know, read through them. Three quarters of that stuff was MIDI. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I have for a MIDI keyboard? <laughs> Three phase of MIDI. It's got <laughs> QWERTY. It's, it, it, <laughs> no, no, I stopped doing Logic. Um, right. <laughs> um, my my MIDI is a a sixty one key Yamaha keyboard that somebody donated to the church that has the power button on top, and you have to work like hell to get the drum samples out of whatever you're playing. <laughs> uh, that's, that's where I'm at right now. So my my MIDI is not so great, but you know that's. A lot, of, a lot of Pro Tools now is MIDI. It's all MIDI drum tracks, MIDI instruments, yep. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it can sound good, but it can also sound really bad. Yep. Yeah. But anyway, I, if you're thinking about pursuing an education, I mean, if that's if that's really necessary for you, um, first of all, look at the program real hard. Yeah. I mean, Full Sail will tell you that 98% or whatever of their graduates are working in the industry, but see if you can actually find one. Like, yeah. go some places. See if anybody that went to Full Sail is working there. Like, uh, Talk to my buddy yeah. that works at the cigar shop. Yeah. Well, yeah. we have, you know, our friend Corey, who went there and immediately got drafted into Calaire Brothers and went on tour with Van Halen. That's sort of the, the lottery ticket scenario. Yeah. That's the dude. Yeah. That's doesn't, happened to. Yeah. Happen so I, I would and, tend to say, you know, get yourself like some basic electronic skills. Probably be the f number one thing. Oh, hell, I'm stuff not even, breaks. I'm not even yeah. there. Learn I, how to use a solder iron. But that's that's my, the best part about John the, staying over my house a couple nights a week. <laughs> saying, that's my yeah, stuff. I don't know stuff what I'm doing. Like, but the thing is, like, Corey... I feel would have learned what he needed to know, whether he went to a, to that school or another school or just decided to spend two years studying on his own. He was motivated. He was driven. He knew where he wanted to be working. He was going to get a hold of that information, whether he paid for a sheepskin or did it on his own or, right. or got it working yeah. at another shop. Like he was going to go after it. Um, 
same thing with myself. I think like I consider my own path. Like I, I probably could have easily gone the other way and which is yeah. not to say that college isn't a great experience. I mean, you get away from your folks, you get to let the hair down, cut loose. You also make a lot of good contacts, but oh, yeah. you can also yeah. make a lot of good contacts working. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you got better, better chances with, you know, big, you know, if you like down where you were, you were kind of close to clear and stuff like had the chance of those people coming through more than you would have working at Main Street Coffee. Right. I guess. But at the same time, like you, you got. To well, or if you want to get away from your family, like fine, uproot and move somewhere. Like yeah. get a job type job, delivering pizzas or whatever, do gigs on the weekends. Um, but, you know, if you, if you want to work in touring, pack a bag, get a roommate, be ready to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Make the jump before you get like I didn't start getting serious offers to go on tour until after I had a wife and a mortgage and a couple of kids. So yeah. at that point, I was making twelve hundred dollars a week as an electrician. A six hundred dollar a week tour is a great tour if yeah. you're twenty two and flopping on somebody's couch or living yeah. with your yeah. folks. Six hundred dollars a week when you've got three mouths to feed at home and a mortgage is bullshit. And I yeah. told the guy, I'm like, sorry, that's I would love to have that right now. Yeah, yeah. That's, I've got to pick up another job to do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not making that much now yeah. on my day job, but you know. I was doing really well at that time. So, but you know, the, the time to do it is now when you're young, like one, when you can handle the stress and two, when you don't have any financial obligations. Oh yeah. Sweet yeah. Jesus. Like, like how, how many, I slept on your couch. I slept in your garage <laughs> a few times, but yeah, like I, I know, you know, living with my folks and stuff. And I, I think I, to this day, I own like a 57. <laughs> <laughs> I think I finally, but finally bought one. I own some cables and stuff, but I don't, the hell, I don't know anything. i I've got most of John's stuff. Like, <laughs> my stuff's not far away. The Joe Meek's in the back of my car, and the Soundcraft's in my office. <laughs> I think it's Snake's in my car, whatever. But, oh, Soundcraft's uh, up in his office now? <laughs> yeah, we tried to get it. that up there. Took it yeah. out of the case. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I can carry it by myself when it's not in the case. So. Oh, okay. So it's lighter than Tubi. <laughs> oh, oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Way easier to move, too. Right. So anyway, I hope that was also. clearer than the mud that it sounded like on this end. But I guess... You know, you guys who are asking the questions, like, should I go to school? Should I get a gig? Think about what's really enjoyable. Maybe check out the shit on Facebook. They yeah, do job well, postings every Friday. Yeah. Well, and tour some schools. Like, while you've got the time, like, you appear to be asking this question in a timely fashion, like, tour some schools. Also, tour some clubs. Like, find a local music joint and hang out. Yeah. If you've got, you yeah. know what? My my initial idea out of, out of high school was, yeah, I got accepted to an Ivy League school for stuff that I'd ended up not doing like I got accepted for for economics and stuff and I got accepted to a couple other places and I was like you know I don't I really don't like school I don't mind learning I just don't like the environment I, I'd rather be out doing something I'm more of a hands-on learning type person I, yeah. I never went back you know I did some school but um essentially the job that I wanted to get after I went to school if it was for whatever I have right now doesn't pay as well as I'd hoped it would but uh, but 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 Ruffles I'm always in a depression. So. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, we, yeah. We didn't get affected by the, the economic <laughs> recession because we never had a surplus. Um, but yeah, like you know, I what I a am, snow removal if you want to be rich in Buffalo. Yeah. <laughs> Except for last year. Last well, year was, yeah. was so I got contract jobs. But but yeah, like I didn't I didn't go to school for any of this stuff. Um, I'm doing okay. I've got you know a bunch of stuff lined up. Fans that want to come in and record with me. Uh, it's it turns out really being how reputable you are, how good you are at what you do. Like if you're, you can go to whatever school you want and get a degree, but if you suck at what you do, it doesn't matter. You can have, you know, me come up with a guy that is awful at his job that has a degree and I'll beat him every time. I'm not, I'm not concerned about that. And then you've got people like Carl went to, it wasn't really a trade school. It was more of a, like an internship with Joe or whatever. And then he did something at, at Starfields too. And, you know, I don't, I don't think Carl did any formal post high school stuff, but Carl's doing great for himself. You know, he, he works as a, a designer for uh, an AV install company and stuff. And, you know, it's, it, it can go both ways. You know, you can do well on either end, but if you can save yourself a crap load of student debt um, and you can do what you're doing, you're good at it. You know, maybe take a semester off after right. high school, work on it, like really beat your, beat your head into the ground over that summer break. And then after summer breaks over, figure out, is this like, can I, can I do this? Can I do, you know, 80 hours a week of BS and inhaling solder fumes and doing all kinds of garbage all the time? Do I like doing this or do I want to go and fill in Excel spreadsheets? Yep. You know, uh, it it comes down to what you're comfortable and you like doing. It's it's not hard to get your feet wet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like getting on the forums, great, but use that as a way to find out where to go to actually see it because, 
people in this line of work, it's not hard to get to us. Like, just get to a gig earlier. Hang around a gig late. Every every, every sound guy wants somebody to move yeah, boxes. And that's, that's how I met John. Like, right. I, I move boxes for John for, I don't know, I I still move boxes for John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I found, I, I found the, John in a parking lot after five years not seeing him. I think it was more than that. It was only like ten. I think it was, it was pretty, only five. A good long between, time. But, yeah. but yeah, I mean, we're around. Like, if you offer to move our gear for us, we'll talk to you. Oh, <laughs> or, yeah. or yeah. offer to buy somebody a beer, or just, or just yeah. be there. Like, just be a person to talk to. Because that's the thing about our jobs—we don't get a chance to talk. Like, <laughs> yeah. we shout orders at people, and you know, have things shouted at us, and then you know, the show starts, and we shout all night. Like, by the time it's all quiet, everybody's gone. <laughs> then, then after a while, they, they start leaving. Like, I think after like the the first five or six Adelaide shows, John just kind of left me. It's like, all right, I'm gonna go smoke. You got this, right? And like, I don't know if he knew my name. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, you got this. You're fine. He left for like you know fifteen I twenty minutes. Know, I didn't know his name, and I actually didn't know how skilled he was or how skilled he wasn't. But he exuded confidence, so I had no problem walking away from him. <laughs> I got this. You go do your thing. <laughs> None of this will be here when you get back, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing caught on fire, and we didn't get canned. So nice. But uh, yeah, I mean, go hang, go get immersed. If you want to work, if you think you want to work in studios, find one. Ask if you can hang out. Promise to be quiet. Promise to be a runner. You know, well, if you it doesn't borrow... have to be a big studio. Like hell, like you know, it could be a home studio. Your, your for buddy all that. that's got one, like sit down and learn with him because. If you if you know nothing, he knows more than you. If you think he's he's junk at what he does, like you can figure out, you know, go home and research stuff. You're like, what is, what is he doing wrong here? What's what should he be doing different? Look it up, yep. figure it out, do Just it the right way. Keep keep yeah. looking until you find the thing that draws you in. Because yeah. there's there's so many fine differences. I mean, even you know, in live sound engineers, like there's such a difference between mixing front of house and mixing monitors. It just takes two completely different types of people. Like to mix front of house, you've got to be an island because you're going to stand out there with the punters, yeah. you know, a hundred or 10,000 or 80,000 people around you yep. losing their minds, screaming. They're going to yeah. be looking right at you and you're within throwing distance of drinks. If something goes wrong, yep. yeah, you've got to just be an island unto yourself, a statue and stand there and do your job in full view and get it right. If you're going to be, which in, is always fun when you walk into a show five minutes after it was supposed to start on somebody else's gear with the last minute call, and you go, you start doing your thing, and then you look around and go, oh shit, there's a lot of people here. Hitch up your drawers, and that's the thing. Like people ask me, how's the crowd? I'm like, I don't know. Like we were out there with them. Like no, it wasn't. I was at the console. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's I like, was, I, I was in knob crowd. and glowy light land. Yeah. yeah, but then to be a monitor engineer. You're in close, you know, you're closer to the band and yeah. the people that really matter are within throwing a drink distance yeah. at you and you've got or wrapping you up with the four cord or six it. or There's only, yeah, a ten, dozen ten, yeah. Yeah, of them Whatever. to deal with and all of those mixes. And, and that's a very personal experience. And that takes a different kind of sound guy, like, like theoretically one with more people skills. Um, I'm not a modern engineer. And better, <laughs> yeah, and better attention span. I can do it, but I don't, have, I don't have the attention span to be really good at it. Because, you know, at front of house, you got to kind of be able to step back and, you know, zoom in, focus on an EQ, focus on some dynamic settings, focus on the system, but then zoom out and take the whole thing in and kind of, yeah. you know, drift off. Like, let your ears go out of focus and hear if anything's out of place. If you're a monitor engineer, you got to be spot on all the time, sweeping over the, you know, the guys on stage, see if they're looking at you, need anything adjusted, be able to tell from a subtle movement of a chin or a wiggle of a finger what adjustments they want, yep. make that happen. Um so even just in, you know, two very similar positions, it's two very different types of person. You know, like a guy who's the best front of house mixer in the world might suck in monitor yes. world, like yeah. might not want to ever go near it. Yeah. And a guy who's yeah. terrific in monitor world might be terrified to set foot out in the house. Yep. Um, so, you know, don't lose heart if you don't right away find the thing that you're interested in. And mixing in clubs is totally different, obviously, from mixing in churches or mixing festival stages or, or mixing stadiums. on little tours or big tours or, you know, in theater. Theater is a completely oh, different geez. world. I mean, the equipment's different. The pressures are different. The performers are different. The, My you know, memory is not cut out for theater yeah, by it's, any means. You know, it, everything is completely different in theater. Broadcast. I mean, there's just – there's no end – all right. so it will if, happen. If Plan all you for know it. is you like audio and, you know, the boxes with the lights on that the sound comes out, you know, then just start looking around because yep. people in our line of work aren't shy. Like, we're not the ones getting interviewed ever. So if you show some interest and want to hear us flap our gums a little bit about what we do, it's it's we'll pretty hard it. to find somebody that's not willing to talk to you. As long as they're not too busy. Yeah. So anyway, there you have it. What else? Uh, 
<laughs> we hope to start actually posting to the blog again. If you're a listener and not yet a reader, do check us out, please. We are at smart, the number two noise dot blogspot dot com. We're in the middle of working on some stuff. Um, get a get a new feed hosting service. So if you're already subscribed, you might have to resubscribe. But uh, the new subscriptions should include the podcasts. So if you want to get get us rolled into your iTunes or whatever whatever application you have for listening to podcasts. We hope to make that a little bit easier for, for some of you folks. Cause there's yeah. going to be quite a few. There's like 40 or 50 of you every week, which is pretty nice. mind blowing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, readership is up, man. I, I looked for, I figured I didn't post a thing this week. You know, I was busy and I was sick and I finally got around to it. I looked at the stats for the week. We've been getting 200 hits a day <laughs> for no reason. Wow. <laughs> I, finally, I looked into it. That one little blip of a post that I did back around Nam time when Soundcraft <laughs> came out with that, yeah. that digital desk with DMX yeah. in it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, for yeah. some oh, reason, yeah. people have been looking at that 200 times a day. <laughs> like, I don't know why. My, my refresh button has been goofy. Sorry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the the F5 sticky keys, keys is on. F5 <laughs> keys a little sticky on the yeah. Mac. <clears throat> um, so anyway, we, we do have some stuff. We have some ideas coming up. Mini podcasts, if time allows. Um, got uh, some questions asked about a Wawa pedal a little ago. Um, it's going to do a demonstration on how that functions, how that works, how you can automate some stuff in. Sweet. I need to get one. I don't have one. I sold all five of them. I'll show you a trick. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And um, one of these days, I'll get around to writing something for you. I promise. Yeah, if you can think of something, <laughs> send it on over. And if anybody out there in Radio Land, uh, in Podcast Land, has anything, if you have any requests, by all means, hit us up. We have the other, another thing we're going to do too is actually get a proper email address set up for the the blog and the podcast. So if you do have questions, you don't have to actually track one of us down and send us personal emails. Um. So there's that. Uh, if you are looking for audio information, there's a ton of great resources. You know, we talk all the time about, you know, we're kind of disorganized. This is just a chance for you to listen in on two, three, four sound guys shooting the breeze. We're not looking to have the last word on anything. If you are looking for the last word, uh, the Home Recording Show is a terrific podcast. They they do have some stuff that's very put together. They give examples. They, well, they read Wikipedia articles. but <laughs> <laughs> There's that. There's Pensado's place uh, on the, at the exact opposite end of the spectrum. You know, heavy hitters interviewing other heavy hitters, talking about the absolute most rarefied air in the biz. Yeah. <clears throat> For live sound, look up Dave Ratt's stuff. Yeah. He, his blogs, his uh, videos on YouTube is all incredible. For forums, you've got Gear Sluts for the studio stuff on Pro Sound Web. There's studio stuff, production stuff, live sound stuff. There are forums dedicated to church sound. There's d forums dedicated to building gear. I'm so excited. I'm getting hoarse. <laughs> <clears throat> Maybe it was the celebratory cigar. Um, and then what else? What else? Well, and there's always Reddit. The uh, the Reddit auto, audio forums are some of the most genteel and erudite places there are to go on the Internet. Things pretty much always say nice. Um, those forums, uh, reddit.com slash r slash audio engineering and r slash live sound. Uh, there's also r slash audio memes if you just want to have a chuckle and yes. waste 15 minutes at work. Give me up, <laughs> folks. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> um, but those those forums are growing by leaps and bounds because it's it's just a great place to share information and the uh, the attitudes are nice in there. There's a very low incidence of trolls. There's none of this mockery and your mama jokes springing up. And when it does, the mods jump right on it and it gets stamped out in a hurry. So there's all of that. And of course, the uh, ever present, ever humble, smart to noise ratio blog. <laughs> do do be leaving the comments. We live for that. We love your comments and your feedback. Our our buddies that comment all the time. That stuff is gold. And we would love to hear from more of you. So with all of that, um, also up and coming, if we can ever get Joey, going to try and do a podcast with him, uh, yeah. getting Ika on the podcast, longtime supporter. Um, we just need to figure out the time difference between here in Germany and, and when we can press record at a time when everybody is vertical. <laughs> and uh, also our friend Liam Smith, who's uh, been a longtime reader, longtime sometimes contributor. Uh, he actually got in touch with me about uh, buying one of, my, one of the consoles that I'm currently brokering the sale of and uh turns out he's back and forth between new york and toronto all the time so <laughs> one of these days when he's in town we're going to see if we can short stop and him and, lunch. yeah at least grab lunch or a beer or a coffee as, as time allows and get him on the air with us so that's that if you have anything for us by all means get in touch and let us know questions comments save your criticism we don't care we're gonna do this whether you like it or not <laughs> kiss the rings and i'm out <laughs> But seriously, folks, that's it. We'll see you next week with episode 51, if you're lucky. All right. Have a good night, guys. Yeah.